Do you remember that crazy event that happened earlier this year? Now, I better be careful when I ask a question like that. It's rhetorical. Don't answer. But do you remember that crazy event that happened earlier this year? I remember where I was when it happened. I was out, let's see, northwest of town. I was out at Steve Gavin's house when it happened. And we were out in his backyard, and we were looking up at the sky. Do you remember that crazy thing that happened earlier this year? It was a solar eclipse. Did you see it? Did anyone get to see the solar eclipse? A few of you? Yeah, it was really, it was really something to see. The sun shining in the middle of the day and the moon moving just in the right spot. And I'm sure someone could tell me that that's not really what's happening. But that's what it looks like, okay? And then you see uh, the, this dark spot with light coming around it. It's this eclipse and it casts a shadow on the earth and it kind of becomes dark. Now, when, if you're in the right spot in the path of it, they call it totality where it becomes like dusk around you. Was anyone... Did anyone drive and see totality? I think there was a few of you that did. Yeah, yeah. Was it pretty awesome or what? Did it look like dusk? Yeah, it kind of got dark all around you. That was a crazy thing that happened earlier this year. This morning, we're going to turn to Luke chapter 1, and we're going to hear about an eclipse. We're going to hear about a different kind of eclipse. So I want that image in our minds as we moved into this text. This is what we hear. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever and there will be no end to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. The woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. And then the angel left her. Can you imagine? (sighs) Pastor David talked about angels talking to us today. I think if you were just working in your house and angels showed up like this, I think you would feel a lot like Mary felt. You'd want the angel to say, don't be afraid, right? So Mary is a confused teenage girl who doesn't understand what's going on. And Mary's reaction to this news that, that, she has, that God is honoring her and that she's going to give birth to a son and name him Jesus and that he will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High and that he will become the King of Israel. He will take the throne of David, his father, and that he will rule over Israel, Jacob's house, forever, and that there will be no end to his kingdom. She, she responds in such a wonderfully human way. Are you talking about me? <laughs> How can this be? How can this be, since I'm a virgin? If we step into Mary's shoes this morning, if we receive this invitation to experience the story from her perspective, I think we realize that that often is our response to an invitation from the Lord. I am only... How can this be? Don't you know who I am, what I am? And you're saying that this amazing, wonderful thing is going to happen. 
So did you see the eclipse that took place in this passage as we read through it? When she asks, how can this be? The angel replies, the Holy Spirit will come over you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The word in the original language here is is conjuring the image that they had in the Old Testament of the cloud that represented the presence of the Lord and it would come over someone and cast a big shadow around them. And as I was thinking of this image of something moving in front of the light and casting a shadow and being completely put in darkness, I thought of the eclipse and how the whole world turns its attention to the eclipse, right? That amazing solar event that doesn't come around very often and we all stood in awe and in wonder and in amazement and we were texting one another and calling as we were looking up and we had special glasses and we had some other things uh, that we were using to protect our eyes, right? Everyone turning their attention to this amazing thing. Well, I wonder what might happen if we as a people were eclipsed by God. If we allowed the Lord to move in front of us so that when people look at us, they are no longer seeing us, but seeing the presence of God. That's what's taking place in Mary's life here. The Holy Spirit will come upon her and will so overpower her and take over that this baby will be conceived and it will be Jesus. So I'm just wondering what might happen if we were eclipsed by God together as a people. I already mentioned Mary is this young, confused teenage girl. So young people, if you're younger than me, you're young. Some of you are older than me and young too, but just a general rule of thumb, if you're my age or younger, I think you're young, okay? So young people, are you paying attention? Are you listening? Okay. Mary was just a teenage girl, and she became the mother of Jesus. That's craziness, okay? So here's the thing. Mary is confused. She's afraid. She doesn't necessarily know what's going to take place, what's going on. She's just this teenage girl that says yes to God. So young people, say yes. Say yes to God. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have it figured out. You can still be confused and afraid and say yes to the Lord. And the truth is is that God can overshadow you and completely eclipse you so that you living in the world, it's no longer you, but it's Christ. You can birth something new for God. Young people, you can do it. You are our ambassadors. We don't look forward to you taking the reins of the church later. It turns out you are full members of the community right now. You represent us when you go to school. You represent us when you talk with your friends. Christ can be birthed through you. So, I'm wondering what might happen if we were all eclipsed by God. Now, if you're not young, this could be a good place to stop because then you would get off the hook, right? But we have to pay attention to how we started this morning. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, Elizabeth, the wife of the priest Zachariah, Zachariah, was very old. And she was barren. We're told in verse 36 that she had been labeled unable to conceive. That's how people thought of her. Unable to conceive. She's no spring chicken, as Aunt B used to say. So if you're no spring chicken this morning, listen up. Look at me. Pay attention. You're not off the hook either. Something new can still be birthed in you if you're willing to be eclipsed by God. Your work is not over. You are full members of the community. You are our ambassadors. So when you're out at the grocery store, when you're home, when you're on the phone, you represent us, you represent Christ. Christ can be born in you anew if you say yes. And allow yourself to be eclipsed by God. And then we hear in verse 37 this wonderful, wonderful news. Nothing is impossible for God. So let me ask you, 
What is impossible for God? Okay, now that was just pathetic for Christmas Eve morning. What is impossible for God? Nothing. What's impossible for God? Nothing. What's impossible for God? Nothing. Do you think maybe you're starting to be convinced yet? Now, here's, here's the tricky part. We like to say that. That sounds lovely. That's a great sentiment. Nothing's impossible for God, so we'll let God do it. We like to suck that verse out of the context of the fact that that means someone who's very old is going to have to go through this very difficult process of giving birth. (laughs) And to that I say, Amen, Liz. (laughs) That is our reaction. That is our reaction. Because guess what? When we are eclipsed by God, it's not easy work. It requires much of us, just as it required much of Mary her entire life. But nothing is impossible for God. And what that means is, there is nothing that God cannot do inside of you. Whatever thing you've been holding on to, God can birth something new in its place. Whatever label you have been given, God can rip off and birth something new in you. That's what it means when we say nothing is impossible for God. Not just, yeah, God can do it. Just do it. Nike swoosh, right? Just do it, God. That's what we like to say. No, it's about what God can do in and through you. How God can use you to birth something new in the world. So... People who aren't young, you're not off the hook either. What might happen if we as a people were eclipsed by God? (sighs) Amen. I say it again. So maybe you're somewhere in between. You're saying, I'm not young, but I'm not not young. Where do I fall? Okay, I'm going to lump us all in together, okay? Where does this take place? Where is this happening? Did you hear at the beginning? God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee. What did everyone say about Nazareth? Yeah, nothing good comes from Nazareth. It was a completely forgotten town. Not just that it was forgotten, it's that people thought, ooh, that is the heel of Galilee. Nothing good can come from Nazareth. That's what people said about it. So, if God was going to come and be the king of Israel, if God was going to come and to be born as a baby, have the name Jesus, to be great and be called the son of the most high, if God was going to come and to take on the throne of his David, his father, if he was going to come to rule over the house of Jacob forever and have no end to his kingdom, he should have been born in Jerusalem. That's where the king belongs but he comes to Bethlehem, to Nazareth. Thank you. Some of you are listening. I'm testing you. (laughs) Comes to be born in Bethlehem, but shows up in Nazareth, the town where everyone says nothing good can come of that place. So, if anyone has ever said to you, Nothing good will ever come from you. Then you're just the kind of person God wants to use. You're just the right kind of person. The Church of the Nazarene, we took that name because we believe that God still shows up in Nazareth today. We believe that those the rest of the world writes off and says nothing good will ever come of them. Those that get pushed to the edge of society, those that are forgotten and passed over, those are the people that God wants to use to birth something new in the world. And so that is why we call ourselves Nazarenes. That's why we are Nazarenes, because the truth is we live in Sandwich, Illinois. Who's ever heard of Sandwich? But the truth is right here. And right now, God can birth something new in us 
for the sake of the world. Well, it's not quite Christmas yet. It's Christmas Eve, and that means we're still in Advent. So we sang a lot of Christmas songs. I'm sorry to confuse you, but it's not Christmas yet, okay? Still have one more sleep till we get there. So we're still in a posture of waiting, of expecting, of longing. Advent is all about recognizing that there are things in the world that are not yet made right. That there is still injustice, that there is still disease, that there are still broken hearts, that there's still bitterness and anger. And longing for God to come and do something about that. And so we say, nothing is impossible for our God. God can birth something new in us. God can birth peace through us. God could bring peace to a home through us or to a city, or maybe to a nation, or perhaps to our world, by birthing something new in us, if only we would say yes, and let ourselves be eclipsed by God. Just as Mary says, I am the Lord's servant, let it be done with me, just as you have said. Anne Osdyke simply prays this prayer. Let Jesus be at home in our flesh as he was in Mary's. May that be our prayer this morning, that we would become the dwelling place of God, that God would birth something new in and through us, whether we think we're too young or too old or too confused or too afraid, whatever excuse we have where we say, really, me, how can this be? Yes, something new birthed in and through us. If only we would allow ourselves to be eclipsed by God. Have you ever heard the phrase, you are what you eat? Oh, if that was true, I would be a pizza and a cake by now. (laughs) You are what you eat. Do you know there's a whole big process of when you take food into your mouth, your saliva begins to break it down. This is going to get kind of gross for a second. And it goes into your esophagus and into your stomach and then there's other fluids that are released into it and it becomes kind of this mush. And eventually it starts breaking down into molecules and that goes, so the sugar goes into your bloodstream and then all the proteins go to your muscles and all this. And really the food that you ate then replenishes your body and becomes part of you. That's what happens in the sacrament of communion. When we take the bread and the cup Recognizing it as the body and blood of Christ, it comes and makes us into the likeness of Christ. So this morning, as has been our practice in Advent, we are going to take the sacrament of communion. I invite you, as we do so, you can come forward to the front of your section. You break off a piece of bread, dip it in the cup, and receive as soon as you have the elements. As you do so, I invite you to come quietly, prayerfully. Imagine if Mary had been too busy to hear what the angel had had to say. Let's pause and listen to what the Lord might invite us to this morning. Because God wants to birth something new through you. God wants to do something in you that the rest of the world says is impossible. And if you think... How can that be? You're just the right kind of person. So would you say yes this morning? As you come and you receive these elements, I invite you to receive them as the beginning of that birth, as the beginning of the Lord doing something new in you today. Let's pray. Lord, I ask that you come in these moments, that you take the bread and the cup, you make them for us the body and blood of Christ. That through taking this simple sign of bread and juice that you would really birth something new within us. That you would plant a seed that would grow. And that after a while we would look back and think, how did that ever happen in me? I used to be so angry, but God has birthed love in my heart. I used to live in a world of chaos, but God has birthed peace in me, through me.
So Lord, come and do what only you can do. We pray this in the name of Christ. So I pray that you might witness Christ being born into the world. Now receive this benediction. May the Holy Spirit come upon you and the Most High overshadow you. May you be eclipsed by God so that something new might be birthed for the world through you by the power of the Lord. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.